let's take a look at our um, next example. It's another compound inequality. In this one, we actually um, have to look at the graph to understand what our answer is. So let's, um, let's take a look at it. We got um, 5x minus 7 is less than 23 and 4x plus 10 is greater than 2. Well, we, we work each one of these down separately and these are just linear inequalities and um, let's see uh, See, solving a linear inequality. Just refresh your memory. Note at any step, combine the like terms, combine num numbers, that's still the same. Get rid of parentheses, that's still the same. Get rid of fractions. Uh, multiply everything by LCM of all the denominators, that's still the same. Get everything with an X on the with an X on the left left side, numbers on the right side. Divide everything by the number in front of the x. That's still the same. If you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, flip an equality symbol. So those are our steps for linear inequality. And if I come over here, uh, I'll work the one on the left first. Uh, there's no parentheses. There's no fractions. So we're down to step three. Get everything with an x on one side or left side, numbers on the right side. So I take negative seven over there. Again, you take anything across the inequality symbol, the sign changes, so that becomes a positive 7. Our note at the top says any step combined together numbers, 23 plus 7 is 30. And our last step says divide both sides by number in front of your x, which is a 5. Like that. This 5 is going to cancel. And we get x is less than 6. Let's do this other one. Uh, there's no parentheses, there's no fractions. Get everything with an X on the left side, numbers on the right side, so I take that over. When I take the 10 over, it becomes a negative 10. Again, when you move anything across the inequality symbol, the sign changes. 2 minus 10 gives us negative 8. Uh, last step, divide both sides by the number in front of your X, which is a 4. And we've got x is greater than negative 2, with an and between them. Okay, so let's look at our graph to help us understand what our answer is. Um, x is, let's start with this one since this is the smallest number over here. It says x is greater than negative 2. Greater than negative 2, I'd be going this way. Now the other one is x is less than 6. Well, x is less than 6. I'm going to, oops, have parentheses there, and less than goes this way. <coughs> now if we have an or between the, um, the inequalities up here, then uh, or it says our answer is where anything is shaded. Now this answer, this problem's an and, um, but if it was an or, then our answer would be negative infinity, positive infinity. Now if you have, if you have an and, that's where they're both shaded. Is our answer. So if I look at this one, they're both shaded in between negative 2 and 6. So we're going to go from negative 2 to 6. And see how there's a parentheses on negative 2 there, parentheses on negative 2, parentheses on a 6, parentheses on a 6 here. Now you're going to find that interval notation is the easiest way to write your answer on these. Um, because it ties directly to your graph, once you look at your graph. You could also, if you wanted to, write it in this manner. If we have negative 2 here, negative 2. If we have 6 here, 6 here, and since this is parentheses here, that means less than. If this was a bracket, this would be less than or equal to. This is parentheses here, so this means there'll be a less than here. Again, if it had been a bracket, it would have been less than or equal to. 
So either one of these is your answer. 